day, day. Train cash off. Wonders will never cease. Are you going up on Saturday? What you doing? Just looking at a queen, blinking at the light. What a lift if you do. It's the trouble with television. Everyone thinks they're Jasper Carrot. Over here, Terry. As a matter of fact, I do want to discuss business with you. No dogs. No, no dogs. Come here. And I want to do some business, not talk about it. Well, these past few weeks have hardly been a relentless grind, have they? Ah, oh, the tide has turned, my lad. The wind has changed. The downturn has bottomed out, as they say in the FT. A lot of words, Arthur. How would you fancy yourself behind the wheel of a Mercedes 450 SEL? Who's had a puncture? No, 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 no. Not mending it. Driving it. Oh, yeah. Straight up. So, Mr. Lilly, he wants someone to drive him round for a couple of weeks, keep an eye on his motor, you know, make sure nobody nicks his hubcaps, that sort of thing. His secretary phoned. His regular driver's on holiday. Well, I must say, I thought you'd be a bit more impressed than that, Terence. It's not often you get a cushy number like that. No, I'm waiting for the catch. There's no catch. That'll be the day. All right, all right, I'll get someone else. No, 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 hold on, hold on. I mean, think of it, Terry. Two weeks living like the quality. Air conditioning, electric windows, in-car entertainment, retractable aerial. Well, who could resist a retractable aerial? Good boy. Now, I hate to seem vulgar, but, uh, is there any money involved? Is there any money involved? 250 per week, cash. All yours. Net. No deductions, no VAT, no tax. No kidding? No kosher. That's the address. Somewhere in Purley. Oh, we don't want to keep manging around, do we? Jumbo, he wants a quickie. Here you go. What? Then you can take him home afterwards, can't you? Terry. He likes a pint. Draft. Yes. I understand you needed Rose. Rose Mellis. Good Lord. Terry here. McCann. Are you going to say it or shall I? Say what? It's a small world. No, you say it. Well, come on in, Terry. Ooh. There's been a lot of soap passed under the old wedding ring since we last met, eh? But I'm not married. Vigorous speech, love. Oh. Well, Mr. Dutchess. So, how's Charlie? Still eating his cauliflower cheese every Tuesday. Charlie's got a new lawyer. 
He reckons with a bit of luck he should be out in five more years. Five years, eh? Well, listen, did he ever find out about, well, you know? Terry, I'm not one to kiss and tell. <laughs> no, no, I mean the buried money. Oh, oh, yeah, I told him about that. He was very understanding. Charlie Mellors, understanding? Got to be kidding. The Dillinger of Dagenham, he's about as understanding as a piranha with bellyache. Terry, I have a confession to make. There's a church down the road. There isn't anyone called Mr Lilly. Go on. You'll be telling me next there's no such thing as the Tooth Fairy. It was me you rang. You little tinker. I thought, well, we got on very well last time, didn't we? And I always like to have people I get on with working for me. Well, yeah, we did get on pretty well, didn't we? Mr Lilly. Get it? Get what? Well, I've still got that flower shop, you know. Oh, see, Lily! <laughs> yeah, nice one. How's it going, the old shop? Oh, it still needs someone to run it properly. A top-flight man with his wits about him. Yeah? Well, don't we all, really? Hold on, Rose. One thing at a time, eh? Now, you've got thousands of pounds worth of motor sitting out there. Now, I was told you need someone to drive it who could also keep an eye on it. That's right, love. Yeah, that's right. It's me. So, from now on, you just tell me where you want to go and I'll drive you there. Ah, you don't meet many fellas like you these days, Terry. Don't you? Men with a sense of purpose. Drive. No messing about. Men and get on with it. Well, let's get on with it, eh? The keys. Uh, uh, uh. The keys. Madam. The old flower game must be calling it in. See what you get when you work hard and save your pennies. Does Charlie know you're living the life of Riley? Uh, not exactly, no. Oh. When Miss Wright comes along for you, love, you'll find out the best marriages always have a couple of secrets between husband and wife. Won't be long. Is this your car? No, it's not mine. I'll just drive it for someone. Well, it's power steering. Yeah, they're very powerful, it is. Automatic, all the posture. Is that a ride, yo? Yep. Let's hear it. What would you want? What you need's a new aerial, mate. Oi! Oi, you little bleeders! Oh, that's lovely. Oh, James. Turn the radio on. Let's have some music. Oh. Uh. I say, my man, when you've done that, have a go at mine, will you? <laughs> well, it's all right. I was only joking. I'm glad you told me that. So, what's Mr Lilly's nice little game, then? Oh, it's terrific. Yeah? Dresses up in women's clothes. What? Handbags, high heels, the lot. Yeah. Then I take him to a few shady-looking little places, then I drop him back here and he gives me a nice kiss. He does what? Gives me a nice kiss. Oh, my God, Rose Mellors. Uh, meet Mr Lilly. Hello, Rose. You remember my name? I'm flattered. Hello, Albert. Nice well, Arthur, actually. Uh, of course, Arthur. Still the old boulevardier, I see. Well, you've got to make ends meet, haven't you? Looks like you found some more buried treasure, Rose. Yeah, that's right. Well, come on, Terry. Nice of you to drop by, Arthur. Uh, well, actually, I came down to see if I could have a little something on account. Oh, yeah, of course. How much do you want? Well, uh, Terry's been at it, what, three days? Century should see you through. Right. Well, two, two or three hundred, you know. There we go. Sure. All right, Terry, love. Give it the gun. <laughs> Is 
There's a catch. There's got to be a catch. Stop over there a minute, will you? I want to get a paper. See how my shares are doing. I believe this. Where's my bleeding car? Where is it? I saw a bird there. You, you saw what? No, there was a bird. Her handbag was snatched and I went to help. And you left the car? You just left it here? No, I was only gone in less than a minute. I mean, somebody oh, nicked the car in less than a minute. Flaming stars. I'll go and find the old boy there. Oh, no, no, no. Don't do that. Well, we've got to do and something. Come on, Terry. I need to drink. Oh, cheers. Haven't you ever wondered what my job is? No, I'm not paid to think. Well, I'll tell you anyway. I am paid a fat commission by some bloke to pick up and deliver things. What kind of things? Well, diamond kind of things. Diamonds? I pick them up in one shape and deliver them in another. Do you mean all those places we've been to? Diamond cutters. Well, it's hardly Hatton Garden, is it? They're hardly those kind of diamonds, are they? Do you mean they're hot? Change, thank you. Warmish, sir. I've been carrying hot diamonds all over London. Sorry, love. Oh, sorry? But I still don't know why you can't report it. Because in the car, there's a hundred thousand quid's worth of uncut diamonds, that's why. I only picked them up last week. See, once a month, I get a consignment. And I put them in a place I'd made special. And I take them out a few at a time and deliver them two or three times a week to these cutters. Then when they're ready, I collect them up again, put them back in the place and deliver them to Mr Tajvi. Who? The boss. All worked like a dream till five minutes ago. Gordon knows what he's going to say about dropping under grand. Never heard anyone call him a good loser. Hold on, look, you might be lucky, right? Whoever nicked the car wouldn't even be looking for diamonds, right? All they'd do is go for a joyride, nick the radio, and that'd be it. If we are lucky, love. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, that's what I meant, we. Now, if you pinch a Merc, it's because you know someone in Timbuktu who's going to buy it. It's gone for good. Or oh, you've found out somehow it's carrying a fortune. For a joyride, you take a mini. I still think we ought to report it. All right, go on. You, get in. I beg your pardon? Get in. No, my mum said never accept lifts off of strangers. Mr. Tejvir wants to see you. Who? Best do what he says, Terry. Best do what I say, Terry. Now, hold on a minute. No, no. Best do what a man says. Yeah? They come to see Mr. Tejvir. Ah! 
My dear Mrs. Mendes. Gentlemen, please do sit down. Some uh, jasmine tea for our guests, Miss Colley. How do you take your tea, Mr. Davy? Oh, just as it uh, comes, in no sugar. Ah, a man of taste. <laughs> So many of your countrymen simply ruin a good Indian tea by throwing in absolutely pounds of sugar in it. You, sir, have a discerning palate, I can tell. Yeah, well, uh, I like the nice uh, cup of tea. I'll have four lumps. You don't take sugar. No, five lumps. Quite right, quite right. Independence. Ah, that's what I admire in a fellow. A chap who doesn't run with the pack. Huh? Makes up his own mind. <laughs> absolutely splendid. Nice. Oh, we have a lovely cup of uh, Mr. T uh, Tower. Oh, uh, Tajvir, as in Devere. <laughs> oh, the secret is quite simple. You see, you warm the pot and always take it to the kettle. Never the kettle to the pot. Oh, I, I must remember that. All right, we've had elevenses. What are we here for? Oh, I am sorry. I do apologize. You're a very busy gentleman. So I won't beat the bush. I'll come straight to the point. I invited you here to see if we can find a way to solve the matter of these wretched diamonds. Any sign of the car yet? No. Well, it's only been two hours, isn't it, or something? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure the British police is most efficient and polite, too. <laughs> uh, they don't bash you about for bloody nothing, not like Bombay. However, it is my feeling, gentlemen, that even if the car is returned, that the diamonds may not be returned with it. No, it seems to me, Mr. Uh, Tash, uh, uh, this is a matter between uh, you and uh, Mrs. Mellors and my associate here. Mr. McCann, I really don't feel I can be of any help, so I'll just say thank you for the tea and slide off. No, 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 don't bother to see me out. I'll find my own way. I won't detain you very much longer, I promise. <laughs> Please. You see, it is my belief that the thief took the car because he knew what was in it. No, never. It was your average car thief. Oh, hopefully so, hopefully so. But, uh, you see, there's one tiny detail about this morning's regrettable affair which keeps nagging away in my mind. What's that? How did he steal the car so damn quickly? Yeah, I've been wondering about that, I know. Oh, I'm sure you have, my dear old chap. I mean, one moment it's there, the next it's gone like greased bloody lightning. Yeah, well, there's some very clever villains about these days. Oh, quite so, quite so. Damn me if you haven't hit the hammer on the nail. It is my conviction that this was an inside job. What exactly are you suggesting, mister? It is my total and utter conviction that the man who had access to the actual keys of the car, simply got in, switched on the engine, and drove it off. Access? Well, it's Rose and Mrs. Mellors and, and me, I suppose. And Mr. Daly. Oh, I've never seen the keys of our car. No, I'm sure you haven't, my dear fellow. But you see, you provided Mr. McCann here who did. Do you see what I mean? Are you suggesting that my associate stole your diamonds in your car? No. Uh... Well, that's all right, then. Otherwise, I'd have to hand it over to my solicitors. I am not accusing him alone. I'm accusing him and you together. Collusion, do you see? Pulling a ringer, working a fast one, putting in the fix. Oh, hold on, hold on. Listen, I don't want to sound ungallant or anything, but you seem to keep forgetting that Mrs. Mellor's had access to those keys. I mean, it was her bleeding car to start with. Oh, quite right, quite right. Quite absolutely correct. However, you're forgetting that Mrs. Mellor's here has been doing a oh, perfectly marvellous job for me for over a year. And not as much as a parking ticket. Now, you two gentlemen appear on the scene, and within three days, I have mislaid 100,000 pounds worth of uncut diamonds. Something tells me there is a rat in the ointment somewhere. Listen, Ganga, then we haven't got your rotten diamonds. Oh, I do so hope my suspicions are unfounded. I, I wish it from the bottom of my heart. Yeah, but how do we prove we are not your tea leaves? Tea leaves? Thieves. How can we prove we haven't got your stuff? Oh, oh, I see. Qu quite, quite simple. You return the car here within 24 hours, uh, complete with diamonds. Oh. He's potty. Oh, 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 potty, tea leaves. <laughs> ah, yes, yes. You are witty, gentlemen, making puns like that. Really, it's a great gift. <laughs> no, seriously, I mean it. The car here, complete with the diamonds by uh, noon tomorrow. Hmm? Or? Or my man out here with his associates will have the authority to break you into little pieces, as they say. But let us not look on the dark side, gentlemen. Let us all meet here tomorrow, complete with the car and the diamonds, and we shall all have a splendid cup of that jasmine tea. <laughs> hey. oh, careful! Sorry, Terry. Hello, Arthur. Yes. What's up? 
Uh, Mrs. Mellors has had her murk ripped off. Oh, dear. Insured, was it? Well, no, that's not really the point, Des. You see, it's the principle of the thing. Terry, I swear on Queen's Park Rangers, I had nothing to do with it. Look, somebody whips a 450 SEL in 30 seconds flat. Now, if you haven't got a key, how'd you do that? You don't. The record for a Merc is something like 5 minutes 20 seconds. You keep records? Well, they have a contest each year. You know, a kind of car thieves Olympics. Uh, just for fun, you know. So someone must have had a key? Yeah. Who? Oh. The keys were never out of my hands. Never. Um, pardon me for asking this, but um, this car, was it... Uh, well, I mean, is, um, did you get it kosher? Of course. Why? Well, there's this bloke they call Yo Yo Pickles in the trade. Seems he once pinched a roller for someone who welched on the price. And ever since then, every time he nicks a motor for a special customer, he tapes a spare set of keys behind the rear light. Then if the punter doesn't pay up the agreed price, well, um, Yo Yo waits a bit, goes round and steals the car back again, using the spare set of keys behind the light. I bought it brand new from the showroom. Oh, oh. Well, I wish I could be more helpful. Have you tried the law? Well, don't be disgusting, Des. I mean, it comes to something when you go ask the police to help, innit? I don't think there's any option. No? All right, I'll go. I talk their language. Hmm? Listen, I know a couple of fellows in the motor business. Maybe they've heard something. You got a phone I can use? Oh, yes, yes. Help yourself. Who's she then? Rose Mellors. Her old man Charlie's doing 15 years. Ooh, you know some funny people, Terry. Hello, Sid. Listen, compared with the mob it's we're dealing with at the moment, he's hilarious. I'm fine. Well, what's her motor to you then? Uh, no, no, it's what's in it. I've got a problem. What is Why it? Isn't it my motor? A big pile of diamonds. Oh, you're joking. Oh, yeah, happy horror is me, isn't it? If we don't find them, there's a little Indian geezer who's going to turn Arthur and me into a crowd. We may have had some luck. Come on. What, Tashvir falling off his elephant? It's the duty of the police to do what? To find it. I pay my taxes. <laughs> and my rates. And it says on the rates bill that a certain amount of that goes towards supporting your lot. Someone's nicked your car and you want us to drop everything and look for it. Well, keep a token force directing the traffic. And, and don't stop the SPG from apprehending people using the bus lanes at Hammersmith. Rosie, love. Hello, Sid. How's Charlie? Oh, he's fine, Sid, fine. I must go and pay my visit one of these days. Yeah. Uh, look, Sid, we're looking for my car. Terrible business. You've got to nail everything down these days. You know what? You ought to bring back national service. That'll stop some of these light freaking gents. <laughs> Hold on, we're in a bit of a hurry. We thought you might know something. Oh, yes. Well, Fred Priest over in Camberwell, he says some funny fellow was trying to flog him a Merc this afternoon. Colour? Number? Didn't say. You have to go and see him. You need greasing. Grass been old bleeder. Thanks, Sid. Thanks a lot. Any time, love. Oh, wait, uh, hold on, hold on. Look, we've been at it five hours already, right? And all we've done is slept from one flash harry to another. Well, have you got any better ideas? Well... I'm doing my best, Terry. I mean, it's not me there after. I could go home, put me feet up, have a drink, watch Crossroads. Yeah. Camberwell. And don't hang about, eh? Really important business in your car. What make is it? Oh, um, it's, uh, uh, no, you know, uh, oh, I know. A man of your means can't really be expected to remember trivial details like what kind of car he's got. It's not exactly mine. It sounds as though you nicked it, Arthur. That is slander, Charlie. I've a good mind to insist on my lawyer being present. Arthur, we didn't bring you in. You came to us. Well, it's, um, it's a Merc. 450 SEL, registration number, EUU47V. What? 
It belongs to a friend. Hi, up, lad. Come on, pal. Hello, darling. How are you doing? <laughs> Hello, love. Can I talk to your cue, then? You're a funny fellow, you know that? Palladium next week. This your cue, then? That's right. Bet you're a dab hand with it. Try me. Ah! Any more comedians while we're at it? Rose! Rose! <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry about that, fellas. We're just looking for someone. Who's your one? A geezer called Yo-Yo Pickles. Yo-Yo Pickles? I think he's in the... Hello, that's Yo-Yo. Here he is. Yo-Yo. <laughs> What's up with him? He's practising for the next Olympics. Listen, can we have a word somewhere? Yeah, sure. Cheers. What's this all about, Des? Uh, Terry, I'll tell you. Look, uh, Mrs. Mellor's here. Mellor's? Exactly. She's had her Mercedes nicked. Des said that you might have some thoughts on the subject. Nah. I only do rollers these days. You know about the Merck trade, Yo-Yo? Yeah, well, a big with the frogs. Maybe you should keep your eye on Bogner. That's where they ship from. Bogner? We haven't got much time. How do you mean? If we don't find it by tonight, some of that. Yeah, all right. I'll ring round. Cheers. And your game. Days. Your car, Arthur, is probably halfway to Kuwait by now. All right. I'll put the word about. Oh, thanks, Charlie. It's very civil of you. Oh, yeah, hang about. Better give me the name of the owner. The owner? Too shy to come himself, is he? Uh, yeah, well, um... Is it really necessary? Mellis. First name? Mellis. <coughs> Good. Mellis <coughs> Mellis. Rose Mellis. Charlie Mellis' missus. Eh? The Dillinger of Dagenham. The Dillinger? No, no, I don't think so. Cheers, anyway. No, no one's heard anything about a Merc today. Yeah, well, thanks a lot, mate. Tara, Des. Yeah, see you, Terry. Bye. See you. Take care of yourself. Tara. What's the big deal, anyway? You can soon nick him another one. No, not like that one. Come on, let's have a game. Yeah, all right. What's your mind? You're the one with three left feet. Hello, Jack. How's it going, Tarzan? Rose? Rose, where you been? I've got to talk to you. I've been waiting all afternoon. Rose? Go in and make yourself a drink, will you, love? I've got a bit of business with Jack. Come on, Jack. What happened, Jack? For crying out loud, what happened? What went wrong? Well, I got the hang of the motor, didn't I? I mean, automatic. You only had to bother with the brake and the other thing of, what's it called, the, the accelerator. Keep your voice down. But just tell me what happened. Oh, well. well, I nicked the motor all right, didn't I? I mean, he didn't see me, did he? Yeah, Jack, you did very well. Then what? Well, I was going great. Turning this way, turning that. I remembered all my air signals. Iron signals. Well, I was going terrific. Then all of a sudden, there was this lamppost. Lamppost? Well, this dog ran out. Oh, Jack. Look, just tell me where the car is right now, at this moment. Serbian. Shunted up a bleeding lamppost? Well, yeah. Right. You get a breakdown truck and you take it the rest of the way. And Jack! What's that, Rose? Don't go banging into any more lampposts. Oh, no danger. I won't do that again. I gave me knee a right bang. Can you find it all right? No problem. It's just across the street from the... From the, uh... From what, Jack? Police station. Rose, what's wrong with Jolly Jack's leg? Oh, he's got a touch of arthritis, poor fella. <laughs> oh, you haven't got your drink? No, I've just come out to tell you I'm going to look for Arthur, see if the old Bill are doing their stuff. Oh, no need. He'll ring you if he's got anything to tell you. 
Rose, it's not your neck they're going to squeeze, is it? It's mine and Arthur's. Oh, go on. Squeeze mine. You've got lovely hands, you know. <laughs> Look, you're all right, Rose, but your timing is rotten. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. It is. It isn't. I'm going to have a nice, relaxing bath. Rose. One of my little luxuries is to drink champagne in a steaming hot bath up to my ears in baddie dust. Sort of bubbles inside and out, you might say. Look, I've got till noon tomorrow before I start feeling the pain. There's a bottle in the fridge. Be a dear and bring me up a glass, would you? Will you listen? The bathroom's upstairs. First on the right. <laughs> Come on in, darling. Oh, it's lovely. to you, dear. Oh, um, should be home by eight o'clock. Nothing much going on here. Yeah, bye-bye, sweetheart. The wife. She doesn't like to eat later than eight o'clock. Yeah, look, Charlie, can't you do something? Look what? Well, ring round, see if anyone's seen the car. Well, have you any idea how many police stations there are in London? You're not like the way you're shown on the telly, I tell you that. There, it's one phone call after another, grab your hat and off. Diving in and out of cars, bells ringing in all directions, book him down, oh, murder one. Here? It's like the rest time at the old folks' home. Sit down, Arthur. What's Rosie Mellor's got on you? Nothing. Why? Because in all my years, I've never known you so much as help a noble lady across the street unless you were paid for it. How dare you? And here you are having a hernia about whether Charlie Mellor's missus gets her motor back. No, Arthur. It rings false. Charlie? Oh, that's a nice time. Mrs. Mellor's is a friend. What are friends for if not to help one another? No, not in here, Arthur. In Mrs. Mellor's world, friends are for grassing on. Take my tip. Find some better company. May I use your telephone, please? Phone my associate. Would that be Terry McCann? It would. He's helping you look for it, too, is he? He is exploring every avenue. Bit like Lady Chatterley's lover, this, isn't it? I know, I never saw it. It's a book. It's about this lady and her gamekeeper. And you're the chauffeur. Yeah, it all happens in the suburbs, don't it? Just think, I never believed all them Sunday papers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, hold on, hold on. What am I doing here? Well, you don't know by now, love. 
I should be out looking for your motor. Oh, don't worry. I'll put in a good word for you with Mr. Taj for you. <laughs> I should imagine that good words don't butter too many lamb curries with your Mr. Tajvir. No, I'm sorry, love. Excuse me. Where are you going? I want to find Arthur, see what's happening. Oh, don't go. We haven't finished the bottle yet. Will you finish it, eh? Then you can have a kit. That old afternoon. Yeah, well, I decided to phone him myself. What do you say? Well, the old Bill seemed to think your car's on its way to the continent. Oh, no. Yeah, so Arthur's gone to Bognor. Fancy. Your phone was off the hook. Of course. I don't take calls when I'm busy. So you're not going after all? No. Can't see any point both me and Arthur being down there. Cheers. Given any more thought about running my flower shop? Yeah, I have as it happens, yeah. What do you reckon? Well, if you still want me to do it, fine. I reckon we'd make a really good partnership, you and me. <laughs> Marks and Spencers, Laurel and Hardy, and now Mellors and McCain. McCain and Mellors? Rose, you're all up. I bet that's Arthur from Bogner. So I get it. Hello? Is that you, Terry? Yes, Arthur, it's me. Yeah. They found a car. The coppers. It was in Serbidon. Oh dear. What do you mean, oh dear? Well, just keep looking, Arthur. That's all you can do, really, isn't it? Terry, are you listening to me? I see. Yeah, you did make good time to Bogner, didn't you? Bogner? What's Bogner got to do with it? Exactly, mate. Well, keep on trucking, eh? Keep on what? Ta-ra. Terry? Terry? How well do you know this Arthur bloke? Well, I'm not very well. Trust him, can you? <laughs> About as far as I can throw him. I reckon he's behind it all, you know. Arthur? Oh, no. Yeah. I reckon he found out Mr Tajvir's racket and stepped in. Really? Hmm. Well, thanks very much. You chaps have done a grand job. I'll take over now, get the motor back to its owner. Why not? I don't have much time. Hmm. Just as soon as we've turned it over. Turned it over? Searched it. What do you want to search it for? Just routine, Arthur. Huh? Oh, All right, carry on. Hey, what's he doing here? He's the joker that nicked it. Know him, do you? Don't you work for Rose Mellors? Rose Mellors? Who's she? Never heard of her. I remember you. When we was looking for that buried money, you was on her side. Not me, mate. Here. What are you doing to Mrs. Mellor's motor? Just giving her the service. This is vandalism. Hello? Terry. Yes, Arthur, yeah. You're not going to believe this. They're stripping the car down. They're searching it. Well, where are you? 
Yeah. I see. Well, now nah, you might as well come home then. No point in staying down in Bogner, is there? Unless <laughs> you want a paddle. Bogner. Yeah, there you go, and Bogner again. Look, aren't you listening to what I'm saying, Terry? Hello. Is it some sort of cross line? Yeah. Okay. Tell him, mate. I'll see you. Terry. Terry. Fancy going out for a bite to eat? We can eat here. Now, oh, come on, what am I, a kept man? Anything you say, love. Just a little place I know. The wine's a bit presumptuous, but the haricot vert, whoa, a culinary delight. We saw here, go. Well, well, well. Pull over here, mate. What's that? Got to see a bloke. I'll wait here for you. No, come on, I want to show you something. No. Yes, come on. Won't be a minute. Terry, what you doing here? And what was all that about Bogner? Look, friend of yours there, madam. Mrs. Mellors? Yes. I've got your motor here. So I see. And the culprit. Yeah, what'd you get for nicking cars these days? Four, five years? I can't remember. Rose. Listen, fellas. It was all a mistake. How's that? Well, I gave Jack permission to take the car. In a pig's ear, you did. Now, straight up, I forgot. I gave him the spare keys and told him I wanted the car serviced. Well, he's a nice lad. But if brains was gunpowder, he wouldn't have enough to blow his hat off. Know what I mean? So I suppose when he saw it parked, he just took it off to the garage, didn't you, Jack? And the garage is the other side of Surbiton, I suppose. That's right. How'd you guess? I don't know what your game is, but I'm warning you, any more of this and I'll have the lot of you for wasting police time and money. Charlie, don't forget the filberts. Uh, there's a taxi outside. Pay it off, will you? Oh, thanks, Rose. No, Jack, the keys. Oh. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, where do you think you're going? I don't know, Rose. You tell me. No hard feelings, eh? I mean, Rose just said it was going to be a bit of a lark. She said, here, you couldn't give us a lift, could you? I've hurt me knee. Come on, Hopalong. Oh, thanks. Honest, I mean that. You're a real...